my voice? Does this mic work? Okay, this mic works. Fantastic. All right. My name is Mahir Arora. Uh, I'm from Chip Agents AI. We are an AI EDA company, really one of the first, and we're focused on agentic AI for hardware, chip design, and verification. I'll explain exactly what that means. So our ultimate goal stems from a core problem that everybody's experiencing. 30 years ago, you might have been working with 10,000 logic gates, but today you're at least working with 10 billion logic gates. So we've seen an exponential increase in the complexity of chips. We've seen an exponential increase in the demands, and yet there's actually been a shortage of hardware engineers. So there's no exponential increase in hardware engineers to match the exponentially increasing expectations that are being placed upon hardware teams now producing, you know, full-size SOCs, really enormous systems, potentially trillions of logic gates for the very largest scale AI systems now being produced, right? Our goal is that smaller teams using AI agents will be able to compete with teams that are five times the size. In about a year from now, that number will be more like 25 times the size, but we are going to see teams of five really being able to go up against 25 teams of 20, 30 or so going up against teams at the 100, 150 team size. We have a lot of different use cases, all of which are enabled by agentic AI, which means that you can actually delegate an entire task in an end-to-end -end fashion to these systems. It'll carry them out for you asynchronously. Everybody wants to hear about the use cases. I will demonstrate a couple of the use cases for you in just a second. They don't take too long. Some of the core standout use cases, it's a very general product. Uh, with a lot of different capabilities, but some of the really interesting things are that you can do things like read your regression logs. Maybe you're running lots of nightly regress regressions. You can read the log outputs, your waveforms, your design under test, your test bench, and you can actually determine autonomously the root cause for these problems. There's also great things like reading specifications, be they the internal specifications or very large protocols that are mature and uh, openly accessible standards, take those and then produce entire verification plans for the whole thing. You can also read that verification plan and you can produce things like UVM coverage models, sequences, checkers. You can read the microarchitecture, a system C architecture, and then you can also implement and integrate new system Verilog modules. So we enable all of these new flows. Everybody is very interested in the performance, so I'll briefly talk about the performance. So our team originally came out of academia. So our founders are professors and grad students from UC Santa Barbara. I'm also a UC Santa Barbara alum. I came from the research side as well. The initial work was done on something called SWEBENCH, a very famous benchmark for AI agents focused on Python programming. The verified version of this was put together with Princeton and OpenAI. So our founders had set the leading results on this SWEBENCH benchmark. And now we've moved over into hardware. So over here, this table talks about Verilog eval, a benchmark produced by NVIDIA for agents working on RTL tasks. We also set the state-of-the-art results on these a couple of months ago. So this is our task now, taking this academic work and productizing it. So I'm going to give you guys a quick demonstration. So just to De clarify exactly what the demonstration will be about. We're going to do the root cause analysis, and then we're also going to talk about test plan and UVM coverage model generation. So I've got an AES module, an encryption module. It's broken. We want to find the root cause from the waveforms. I've also concurrently got an AXI protocol that I got from ARM, and I want to put together all of this verification collateral. So I'll do that for you right now. I've got Visual Studio Code open. So let me see if I can increase the font a little bit. Hopefully people can read that. Okay, great. So Chip Agents is our flagship product. We deploy it in a command line utility. So these, while I'm open in Visual Studio Code, we have a terminal open on the left and right hand sides. Since we only have 10 minutes, I'm actually going to run these demonstrations in parallel. So the first one I'm going to talk about is to do with this AES encryption module. The problem that we have, this AES here, this is just the top module for it. Uh, there's a couple of other modules as well. I also have a test bench. This test bench is very quick. It's got just this first test case here and these second two test cases. Now I'll tell you what's the problem. The problem is that the first test case passes, but the second one fails. It's a particularly nasty problem. But luckily, I have a waveform corresponding to the trace output of this. So this is my interface to chip agents. It's natural language. If I enter in my command to chip agents in full natural language, Oh, I should probably be in the uh, different directory. Let me take this prompt and move over to the 
Chip Agents AES. There we go. Open up Chip Agents and provide at the prompt there where I'm just going to provide the information. The first test case passes, the second fails. I wanted to use the waveform in order to figure out what's going on. Concurrently, let's also take a look at this AXI protocol. This is a 300 page specification that I downloaded from ARM's website for the entire AXI protocol. What I want to do is read the protocol spec, write a markdown test plan. I also want to write the UVM coverage model, the UVM sequences, and I want a couple of different things about those sequences, just some general requirements. I'm going to hit enter there as well, and it's going to kick off the entire process. So I'm running these two things in parallel because we don't have too much time. And also I get some, this way I get to talk about plenty that's going on here. Let me first talk about the waveforms and its capabilities. So you'll see that it's examining testbench.vcd. One of the first questions we get is what other waveform formats do you support? We also support FSDBs and many other different waveform formats are on the horizon. Right now we support FSDBs through the Verdi waveform viewing libraries. You'll see that what it's doing here is it's actually analyzing this waveform file and then it's viewing a number of different signals involved in the waveform VCD and it's also viewing a number of different files including the actual core components of the AES encryption module. Oh, here I think I am lacking actually my AXI specification in this particular repository. That's okay. What I'll do instead is I will do a, um, where is this one that I had? Oh, I'm, I'm in the wrong directory for this one. <laughs> there we go. That's the AXI specification. Read the AXI specification and write a markdown test plan and UVM sequences and coverage model. That's okay. So I swapped my directories there by mistake. That's okay because the waveform analysis is actually done. And this one is very, very interesting. So let's go through and look at the waveform analysis. So to reiterate, what it's actually doing is it's reading this waveform. It's reading the different files that are associated with the AES. And from there, it's actually done a root cause analysis. So this is the waveform analysis that's come out of the other end. The main issue is actually in the state machine of the AES-128 encrypt module. So this is the module here. This is the core state machine. Here's the problem. In the add round key stage, when the round counter is actually equal to NR minus one, so this is the final round, it correctly sets the ciphertext, it correctly sets the done flag, it incorrectly sets the stage to sub bytes instead of idle. That's the core problem. And it even gives me evidence within the waveform. This is the pico step, uh, the picosecond timestamp of interest where it tells me specifically about the done signal and also the stage transitioning incorrectly. It tells me the other timestamps that I can look at as well to examine the ciphertext here as well, right? Here it's showing me how it's cycling, four to one, one to two, back again, four to one again, when it should be transitioning to stage zero. Here's the actual root cause in the code. So this is lines 80 to 90. Here, the bug is shown right here, quite visibly for me. This line here needs to be changed to zero. And then it tells me about the impact as well. Finally, Chip Agent summarizes that results for me. And now you can see that actually I've done the entire root cause analysis. This is very, very exciting to us. We have multiple commercial customers who are already using Chip Agents in this style, taking the regression outputs from, for example, re nightly regression runs, feeding the waveform and the design under test files into Chip Agents and then isolating the root cause. But that's not the only thing that Chip Agents can do, though it is very exciting. Other things chip agents can do is, for example, put together this entire test plan for me, which it has been working on. Let me accept the creation of this file here, and then I'll walk through exactly what's going on. So what chip agents was doing as we were going through the rest of this was working on this AXI protocol, and now it's working on the uh, reading this AXI protocol. It did things like check the table of contents. It checked the main AXI channels and their purposes, the AXI transition types, the key aspects, and now it actually put together this very large scale AXI test plan for me. In the meantime, I asked it to do a number of other things, like create these actual UVM sequences for me. In brief, I'm going to talk about the actual AXI test plan. So I'm gonna format it here in Markdown for everybody to view some of the capabilities. You see the, what, what it's done for me is it's enumerated nicely in these Markdown tables, and that was my request. I wanted it to be in Markdown. All of the different specific details about the AXI interface. For example, here's all of the information about the channel handshakes, all of the different handshakes that are done on all of the channels. 
here's clock and reset. Here's the right request channels. Here's the right data channels. I can scroll down a little bit to maybe some more interesting things. We've got all these different burst types enumerated in the Axie as well. Different memory attributes that are enumerated. Different protection and security types. Transaction identifiers, request orderings, exclusive and atomic accesses. There's a lot of information that's had to pull out of this spec. This spec is 300 pages and you have put together this verification plan for me right before your eyes. This didn't exist before. None of the collateral in fact existed before. We've tested this system on arbitrary scale, arbitrary, so arbitrary size, and arbitrary number of documents. You can provide this thousands of pages. Ethernet is 3,000 pages, for example. Chip Agents handles that just fine, and it'll produce test plans for you, or you can query against them and then determine information about those specifications. Also quite useful. You can query other long, very, very long documents, potentially entire code bases. For example, all of the RTL that if you're on the verification side, a big bottleneck is understanding the RTL. You can feed in hundreds of files into chip agents. It'll comb through all of them and return an answer to you about data flow, for example. At the same time, chip agents has put together this very long set of transactions for me. Let me scroll all the way up so I can at least find the path here. Here so are the minute, UVM. One, sorry, one minute. Sounds good. Here are the UVM sequences. So we can do all sorts of different parts of the UVM test bench, but I'll just showcase the actual sequences. This is an 800 line of code Verilog file just produced for you, pulled out of thin air from nothing more than the spec and the test plan that was produced by it, with the base sequences here, the write sequences with a number of different constraints, the read sequences, and so forth. So I can continue to scroll through this here, but you'll also see that all of these sequences directly align with the actual test plan that's in place. Okay, so Chip Agents is going off and doing plenty more as well. But to summarize in brief, we're the only company in the world right now who's tackling this important problem in electronic design automation, which is that the core problem in hardware is that there's exponential expectations on hardware teams. And people need to be able to handle huge amounts of information, huge amounts of data, tabulate and convert it into huge amounts of verification collateral. They need to do a huge amount of debugging, a huge amount of design. We built this system and it helps teams feel like they're five times the size or 10 times the size. That's what, we're, that's what we've been tasked with. This is the progress we've been able to make so far. We have lots of commercial customers already utilizing chip agents. But this here, this is the future of EDA, and that's why we're excited to build it. So